one of the biggest things we're being asked lately on the Academy um, is mature skin and how to take care of it or how to work with it. So that's what we're going to do. Fran, who is 102, she looks amazing. <laughs> <laughs> No. <laughs> so Fran is going to be our model. We're going to make her look gorgeous. Now, one of the biggest things when you're dealing with mature skin is, is making sure it's as supple as possible. So first thing you want to do is, you know, moisturize it really well. I like to kind of work my moisturizer into my palms of my hands and then just kind of press it into the skin so you get it nice and moisturized. Then I'll kind of go back over it with just a little bit of a damp sponge, work it into the skin because having the skin prepped is going to be so important. You know, we don't think about that. No, we don't. And that's one of the things. Why does her skin look so good? Well, we moisturized, moisturized, and moisturized. Yep. Especially up, up here mm -hmm. in this weather and being in all that heated air. Mm -hmm. okay, we're going to do a little bit of eye cream underneath. Look up. There we go. Because this is the area of your skin with the least moisture glands. Mm. Let it soak in. Now I'm going to use a foundation primer. What a foundation primer does is it helps your foundation stay perfect. So now you're it lucky. All day. Yes. Kind of. <laughs> yeah, it keeps it in place, kind of protects mm -hmm. your skin from the foundation, the foundation from the oils in your skin or your skin period, mm -hmm. um, and it kind of minimizes fine lines. Oh, I love that. Yeah, the foundation won't mm -hmm. seep into them and draw attention to them. Because I do think it causes little creep. Yeah, it can. And Especially like if that. you use the wrong the wrong consistency. Mm -hmm. Now you're lucky your skin's pretty even. You must have been a good girl being 102 and looking this good. <laughs> <laughs> now we're going to start to apply a little bit of foundation. Now Fran, I do things a little differently. I'm going to foundation your forehead and conceal your eyelids and put all your eye makeup on before I put your foundation on the lower half of your face. Really? Yeah. <clears throat> that way I can moisturize underneath your eye again, get everything off that I dripped, and everything stays perfect. Okay, so we're going to use a little bit of a whipped type cream consistency, which is really kind to your skin mm -hmm. with a high pigment to it so it doesn't take a lot to get us the coverage we want. I don't know, sometimes maybe I use too dark of foundation. Um, we raised our family in California, so we were always tan. And it's hard to get used to <laughs> How do you use not looking tan? Yeah. Better too dark than too light. Is that right? Well, I think too light can yes. make you look older. Well, that's what I'd I rather thought. you walk around being a little darker than you're, you know? Oh, I'm glad to hear that. Because you can always kind of blend her at the neck. I'm glad to hear you say that because I thought, oh, that's probably a real no-no that I'm doing. Well, it's not a yes-yes, but it's certainly not the worst no-no in the world because you can blend it out. Mm -hmm. I do try to blend it with one of those little sponges. Yeah. Now I'm concealing your eyelid so that the eyeshadow work I do is going to look more flawless because i got a fresh mm. canvas. You know all about canvases. Mm. So it just gives me a blank canvas. There's no discoloration there. Now, if they're creasing is a problem for you, you could use a, a, a priming type product to on your eyelid first. I'm going to prime it with um, with the eyeshadow. Yes, yeah, so after keep the, eyeshadow. the rest of the day. Uh, yeah, you put it on before uh -huh. your shadow uh -huh. and before your concealer, uh -huh. and then it just helps everything stay. Uh -huh. Still, I'm going to do a cream shadow, a little bit of it to help everything stay. Okay, so I'm just powdering a little bit, mainly your eyelids. I'm going to wait to decide where I want to strategically powder everything else later. Okay, now we're going to add some brows. God starts to get mean and take them from you. Mother Nature is not kind. So little short feathery hair like strokes in the direction mm -hmm. the hair grows, so then mm -hmm. you're just mimicking brow hairs. Mm -hmm. Then I'm going to go back over my pencil with my brush number one to blend it out. You always want to go back over pencil 
afterwards with a stiff angled brush to help blend out the color, make it look even more natural. Now I'm going to go back over the pencil with a brow powder to help set it even a little bit more for me. Whenever someone has silver gray hair, I prefer to do kind of a pale blonde brow versus a silver gray because it's going to make you look older on ivory beige skin and on bronze ebony, just a very neutral brown, light brown brow. Okay, now whenever we're dealing with skin that has any kind of texture to the, to the skin, the more matte the shades are, the more flawless that will be. So I'm going to use all mattes for your shadow. Mm -hmm. I'm going to do a little bit of a matte cream just at the base of your lash line. Right on your lid. Oh, that's great because I've got those little bumps. You know what I mean? Yeah. This is just going to kind of pop that a little bit more to give us a little more dimension. No, didn't it seem funny how suddenly your your age? You're like, wait a second, I was 20 yesterday. Okay, now I'm going to take a matte beige eyeshadow. I'm going to highlight just right over that matte cream and your brow bone. Now, I'm going to go ahead and curl your lashes and do my first layer of mascara. So I can see how much your eyes are going to get opened up with the curling. Okay, look down for me. <laughs> look down, open and look to there, yeah. You know, I've been using that light lash, or that uh -huh. lash, until last summer I kind of got lazy and didn't use it, so I, when I heard I was doing this like, <gasps> oh, darn, because you know, after a while they do go away, and I'm so mad that I hadn't kept it up since I'm doing this today. That's okay, I'll add a couple. Because I do sort of need them. Sometimes I take, snip the little fake ones and put them in the corners. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Yep. Look down. There you go. Okay. Mm -hmm. I've done a layer of mascara on Fran. Now I really want to make sure our eyelashes stay curled and are as curled as possible because that's going to help open the eye up. So I'm going to go back with my heated eyelash curler. Yes, mine is loved immensely. I have it taped together. <laughs> open and look down, but it gets nice and warm. And I'm just going to really that get. Feels good, actually. Yeah, it re really gets that curl in really well on those lashes because that really helps open the eye up. See how much more curled looks right in there, or there. See how much more curled that is? Um, and yes, you can keep using, I'm going to do it right here by your face, Fran, just so I know mm -hmm. I'm in camera. You can keep using it as long as it lights up and it warms up, because <laughs> I tape them together for a long time if they still get hot. Okay, now I'm going to start my shadow, or finish my shadow. Now, my goal here is to get 
all this fleshiness away from us so that when we look at Fran, we don't see that, we see her eyes. Oh, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with a mid-tone, which is a matte taupe. Look down. And I'm going to start to put that matte taupe on all that fleshiness. And by deepening it with a matte taupe, it's going to start to push it away from us. So it just disappears. Fabulous. Now we're not putting it on the area that we highlighted, that little part of the lid because that we want to keep bright and light. I'm using my brush number 11. I'm really going over all of that fullness. And you can see how it's starting to open the eye up. It's starting to make your eye color pop. Now you have to really look, completely look at me, yeah, with the eyes open so you make sure that you got the color everywhere you need it because your lid, when it's open, is so different than when it's closed. Really? Yeah. And you'll see, like, when you're looking in a mirror, like, if you were to mm -hmm. hold a mirror, like, right here, mm -hmm. and you were to look down into the mirror, you're going to see where there's a, a line right across there. Mm -hmm. That part is still your lid, and it still shows as your lid. And mm -hmm. then above that, we want it to go away. Mm -hmm. So we lightened the part below that, that crease, and mm -hmm. we're deepening the part above the crease. Now we're going to take number 30 brush, and a little mid-tone. We're going to just do it in the outer corner. Start to deepen that. And actually, rather than looking straight ahead in a mirror when you do your makeup, it would probably be easy if you looked into a mirror this way because it puts your lid at another position where you can get at everything. Wow. Would you ever think to do that? Yeah, because usually you're just so used to doing it like mm -hmm. this and mm -hmm. sometimes like that. Mm -hmm. Whereas if you just look down into it, it puts it right at the right spot for you to do That's your lids good. everywhere. Yeah. And you can see the creases in your lid where it's going to go away, where color needs to be. Once again, I'm using all matte shades so we don't accentuate skin texture. Now, I'm going to push, instead of doing a dramatic line, but I want some definition, I'm going to use my number 41 brush. Look down for me. And I'm going to open and look down. Now, there you go. And I'm going to push some color right at the base of your lashes where they grow out of your lid. Mm -hmm. and what that does is it creates definition, mm -hmm. but it doesn't give us a harsh line. And then... We get that nice pop, and it makes your lashes look really thick. Down. Okay, now I'm going to take number 30 brush again, just a nice little matte brown, because your eyes are blue, and I want to make the blue look bluer, and use it in the outer corner. Mm -hmm. But that's nice. Yeah, I find many women as they age tend to go to, like, very frosty, cool colors because mm -hmm. they think they need to for their hair. Well, I think that is true. I think I've done the very same thing. <laughs> You're an artist, Fran. <laughs> well, <clears throat> actually, uh, the fact that I'm a winter, you know, the coloring, it's made me go to, like, the charcoals and the... But you know, you're the not cooler. even a winter anymore. I'm a vibrant summer, aren't I? You're, yeah. Well, I, I don't believe they, in I don't I believe in the seasons, and they, no, because it's it's so kind of antiquated, in the sense of what really works 
is there's not always a set and if you really read the book there's mm -hmm. subsections or mm -hmm. subcolor mm -hmm. sections so everyone can wear every color they just can wear a version of the color which mm -hmm. I think is kind of the truth mm -hmm. um, and uh, so I think we get so caught up in okay this is our what, only what mm -hmm. we can wear and so you start doing which even if that's what you wear on your body it's not what you wear on your face and so I'm applying it to the face mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah and so that's fighting against your blue eyes and you're losing some of your blue Fran, we've just changed your world. Okay, now I'm going to clean out underneath your eyes with some eye cream. And this does two things. It cleans all the shadow off that we've dripped, and it re-moisturizes that area. So it gives us another layer of moisture. Mm -hmm. So it's twofold in helping us. Because like I said, it's the area of your face with the least moisture glands. Do you think the dark circles are from allergies? Sometimes, you know, you get that little dark or lack of sleep. Have you? Um, I think that they're usually hereditary. I mm -hmm. think lack of sleep can increase them. Mm -hmm. uh, allergies can increase them. Mm -hmm. um, there some, there's a couple schools of thought. One is that it's bruising, so mm -hmm. it's blood, so vitamin K will help it. Mm -hmm. um, but yes, I think that externally things that happen can definitely increase their visibility. Mm -hmm. I'm going to do a little bit of foundation all over the face now, kind of even out the skin. Just give us a nice even complexion because they've done studies and wrinkles are not what make us appear older. In the studies, it was uneven skin tone. Really? Yeah, that's what makes people perceive us as looking older. I mean, wrinkles do as well, uh, but, but uneven skin tone is the biggest first, the first kind of hint or clue. That is a new thought. That's why even a, the littlest bit of an evening out of your skin mm -hmm. can make a big difference in making you look mm -hmm. youth, more youthful. Okay, now, since you have very specific dark areas underneath your eye, I'm going to use concealer and a brush. I'm using my number 53. And I'm going to apply concealer directly to that darkness. You want to remember to color in the lines when you're concealing. You don't want to just put it over a whole general area because you won't conceal anything away because your lightened skin is already the right color. You're back to two shades of skin, so you apply it just to where you're dark. She's kind of like a, <clears throat> a little moon shape. Yeah, you're, it's kind so of like you a... stay right? Just right on that darkness. Because mm -hmm. okay. if I pull the concealer out of that area, uh -huh. I'm going to lighten skin that's already the right color. Oh, of course. So then you still have multiple shades of skin. Then we're going to go over that with a little bit of foundation. You know what? I'm going to get, but I'm going to use my foundation brush so it's more specific. And get it more specifically applied. And now, whenever you put your foundation over your concealer, you're going to stipple, which is a patting motion. It's not wipe off your concealer. Mm -hmm. Now, anytime you have a cream or a liquid, you have to set it. But, with that said, in your case, we don't want too much powder, or too heavy of a powder, mm -hmm. on your skin. So I'm going to do what I call finger powdering, the area underneath your eye. Before I do that, I want to get a little bit more concealer, because out in the outer corners of your eyes, you've got a little bit of darkness. Do you tend to water? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. I can tell by a little bit of discoloration in the outer corner. Have you ever seen, uh, asked the doctor about why you might water? Because <clears throat> we have dry eyes. Actually, um, I watered, I lived in Russia for mm -hmm. 18 months, and my eyes watered a lot there. <clears throat> and that's where it began about four or five years ago. Oh. And but when I came back home, it it's practically cleared up. So. So it's just it's just I think discoloration it's, that's there for now. I think it's temporary. I hope so. Well, it's but, very very minute. And when I saw it improve, then I didn't um, worry about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Okay, so to finger powder, I'm going to take powder. I'm going to get it on my finger. Get the excess off of my palm of my hands. Look up for me. And I'm just going to lightly powder that area. This way you get the minimalist amount on there. I can see how this could stay all day, your makeup, <laughs> instead, of instead of going away. And touching it up, you yeah. know, midday. And okay, now let's finish your eyes. And I'm going to just get a little bit of my mid-tone. Got to find the brush. Take a little bit of my mid-tone, look up for me, and just go right at the lash line with it. Once again, everything's matte. Is that number 13 brush? Yes, using my number 13 brush. Actually, <clears throat> we have to watch out for the fads because sometimes, you know, the glitter comes in. Oh, yeah. And the shine. And oh, when we're always yeah. attracted to shine. Mm -hmm. Sparkly is always pretty. We run right out. Yep. Okay, now I'm going to do another layer of mascara. And now I'm going to do a little bit of bottom. Look up. Now I am using waterproof. Mm -hmm. Just because you're more likely to water and run. Yeah. Unfortunately, when you get in your 40s like you are. <laughs> thank you. Because that's how you look now. Oh, double thank you. Just taking a Q-tip because I didn't wipe enough mascara off of the wand. It got a little clumpy. That's a great trick to know. Yeah. And just take a dry Q-tip. Okay, now I'm going to lightly powder just to set. We don't want a lot, just a little bit. Now I'm going to do a tiny bit of a cream blush and nice smile for me. Corally peachy color on the apples of your cheeks. So it starts to give a glow. I'm sorry, did you see what brush that was? Using my brush number 64. I'm so glad to know how to do rouge. Has it been the bane of your existence? Well, I'm never quite sure exactly where I'm supposed to well, put it. Well, when you're using a cream, it's going to be on the apples of your cheeks. And I'm just doing a little bit of a cream because I think it's a little glowier and it's going to make your skin look a little fresher without being shiny. I'm going to powder back over it just to set it. Now I'm going to do a little bit of bronzer. And when you really apply rouge, it's, it's mainly on your cheekbone. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now I'm going to do a little bit of bronzer towards the back. There was a time that they... Yeah, back in the 80s where they did, like, so in the, the sunken, yeah. Mm -hmm. Use your cheekbone. No, I, I haven't yeah. done that for a yeah. long time. <laughs> so we're just going to use our cheekbone, mm -hmm. give it a little bit of color, because one of the things, too, we lose as we age is color toned mm -hmm. our skin, which is probably why one of the things you feel like you don't look as tan is mm -hmm. part of it's just you've lost mm -hmm. some of that as you've aged. So a little bit of bronzer will always give us that kind of, like, glowiness back. Mm. So this is a bronze as yes. opposed to a rouge. This is a bronze first, mm -hmm. yes. Mm -hmm. And it's a, a matte shade so that we don't accentuate skin texture. And I like one that doesn't have a lot of orange in it. Mm -hmm. Now I'm going to use this same brush number 73. And I'm going to take a powder, which just gives your skin a really pretty glow, which is kind of all we want from it. We want to add tone back to your skin, but tone that looks natural. Mm -hmm. And some of that could be why you're trying to go for a darker foundation. Mm -hmm. Whereas if you used a bronzer and a I little more colorful blush, you would get the same effect without it being a different color than your skin. Mm -hmm. 
And you're probably choosing more neutrally looking um, blush shades, and I chose a bright coral. Mm -hmm. But it's really sheer, so it didn't go on like mm -hmm. heavy. So neat, too. Okay, now lips. Now, since your lip line is not as strong as it once was, let me re moisturize one more time and then make sure they're nice and supple open. Okay, that's better. Okay. Okay, rub them together for me. Blot off the excess. Okay, now I want a more definite, perfect line. So I am going to conceal away the edge of your lip just because your line's gotten a little bit skewed and how definite it is or is not. And, and does it also prevent that feathering? It does prevent a little bit of feathering. But I'm also going to use pencil and line first, so that helps mm. prevent feathering as well. But this just gives us a clean slate so that when we put the liner on, no discoloration or, you know, it makes it look like an even lip. Now I'm just going to use, I'm just going to use a nice skin tone color because I don't want them to be overly dramatic. And I'm going to line. I'm going to fill in just slightly. Now, I'm going to use a brighter shade than you were wearing when you came in because, once again, that adds kind of life to the face. Mm -hmm. been avoiding very bright lipsticks because I didn't want to bring attention to my little chip my cheeks. You know how everything oh. starts sagging down. Really? Yes, it does. Well, actually, but the color you were wearing was making you look drab and was aging you. Really? Mm-hmm. But you'll see this color's not real bright. Like, probably, this is real bright for me, mm -hmm. but to you, it's probably not going to seem that mm -hmm. bright. It might, but, you know, bright's relative. Mm -hmm. I just wanted it to be colorful versus kind of dead purple. Not that yours was dead purple. <laughs> I, no, it was hardly anything at all, was it? <laughs> oh, Fran, you look 30 now. Whoa. <laughs> of course, I'm sure you don't want to go back to 30. And do all that over again? Yes, I would. I'd do it better this time. Oh, would you? Of course. I heard you did it pretty good last time. <laughs> <laughs> That's word on the street. You can always improve. <laughs> and then I'm just going to do the tiniest, tiniest, tiniest bit of gloss. Just a, a little bit, just because I think shinier is prettier. You don't have to do that every day if you don't want. But I just think lips with a little bit of shine are so nice. And everyone, you can see how this just, just look how pretty those lips are. Great improvement. <laughs> Thank you. It really is quite a fantastic, you know, to, yeah. to learn. Well, you, you get so used to seeing yourself uh, one way. That's how you're true. comfortable. Mm -hmm. And other people see you differently. This is a great experience. Thank well, you. Good. See, look how good you look. Wait, you really see yourself. Oh, wait, here. I'll show you. Where's the mirror?
You just look fresh. Great improvement. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so this is what I've done um, in order for the mature skin. I don't want to accentuate any skin texture. I don't want to accentuate things Fran doesn't want to see. So we used matte shadows. We made her skin really supple and fresh. We kind of brightened her lip a little bit, defined her lip, and accentuated her best features. All right, we're going to take... And now I'm a recycled teenager. Oh, now you're a recycled teenager, good. yeah. Now you're 20. Okay. Getting there to 15. Okay, um, so we're going to go take her hair down and come back into your after shot. Okay.